Good morning, saints of the living God. Good to see everybody. Good to connect with you again. This is the day that the Lord has made. I choose to be glad and rejoice in it. You should do so too. Hallelujah. Today I'm bringing you a word that the Lord has put in my heart the last couple of days. Hallelujah. Actually, it's been there for a long time. But it's just that I've been trying to put it together. It's like, Lord, what is this? Like some things they 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 kind of like feel complicated in the beginning. But then when you seek the Lord, he begins to show you how you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. So today I want us to go, actually the word that I want to share with you today that the Holy Spirit wants to share with you through this vessel is the word hallelujah that is uh, going to provoke you to being the real you that's going to provoke you to know who you are consequently you'll be provoked to doing what you're supposed to be doing there's something about uh, knowing who you are there's something so um so, so um tangible or something so solid about knowing who you are that gets you to a place to doing what you're supposed to be doing. I really, I think it's all about uh, identity. The reason people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing is because they don't know who they are and they don't understand who they are. So when I, I want to help you today, you know, the, I want the Holy Spirit to help you through me, hallelujah, to bring you to an understanding of who you are, of what you are called to do it's not so much about being called to do it's about bringing you to an understanding of who you are hallelujah that is to provoke you to doing your assignment your purpose that which god has called you to do let's go to the to the word holy spirit help me execute your word the way you know how help me god to, to articulate father your word the way you want me to father in the name of jesus i pray that you will speak through my lips oh god come straight into my heart oh god you're already in my heart oh god but lord i pray that lord you'll be fully visible today father god into your people oh god in the name of jesus you she said you be if you'll be lifted up you'll draw all men unto you hallelujah let all men let all men and women oh god be drawn unto you, God, all for the glory of your name. That Lord, they will eventually understand who they are. They will get to do what they're supposed to do. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I've lifted up my hand and ask you to help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go to the book of um, Genesis. I'm going to go straight to the beginning of the word. Hallelujah. Not very beginning, kind of, you know, uh, on the, you know, the dominion part. Hallelujah. Because, you know, my ministry I've been called into is a king dominion, do, kingdom, king dominion legacy. Hallelujah. I'm all about the kingdom of God. I'm all about the dominion. I'm all about living a legacy. That's what I'm called to do. It took me some time to discover. I, I knew some bits and pieces in the beginning, but you know, through prayer and just through doing, uh, through being faithful, thank God, uh, with the little that he gave me, he began to reveal to me what it is that he wants me to do. Hallelujah. So that's my prayer for you today, that you will eventually as well discover what you're supposed to be doing, because that's the greatest thing in life after salvation to know what you're supposed to do to know why you wake up to know why you're breathing to know where you are heading hallelujah there's nothing worse than moving around not knowing where you're going that you you end up idling i've been at this at a, at a stage at a place of idling before that's a very dangerous place to be you gotta know specifically what god has called you to do Glory to the living God. I'm going to read from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. And I'm going to jump to Genesis 2. Hallelujah. I want us to talk. I want actually to explain to you the difference between creation and formation. These are two different words. Yes, the people, they use them interchangeably. But really, when I do, because you know when, when, when I reason with the word, when I reason with the Lord, even though he speaks to me in English, but and because English is not my first language, I always have to go back to my language to make sense of what is being said. Hallelujah. So 
when I when I, when uh, when I hear some words, I have to go back to my original language. It's a closer. Hallelujah. E -e -e. Then I'm able to to go back to English. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but most of the times it helps me to make sense of what is being said. Hallelujah. So I have to translate uh, in my language the word creation and the word formation, and I realize these are two different words. Yes, they are used by many interchangeably. Yes, maybe it may it, it does work sometimes. But uh, formation and creation are two different words. Creation is talking about um, Hallelujah! It's it, it's talking about. Let me let me read let me read the scripture. Then I will explain to you why where I'm heading. Hallelujah. Verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all, hallelujah, over all, <laughs> think about that one, the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth, hallelujah. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the end and over every living thing that moves on the earth and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth hallelujah and every three whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food hallelujah that scripture is very deep this is a scripture I've been meditating on for a very long time actually you know not that that the whole verse, but there's a particular part I've been meditating on. This is how the Lord began to birth the ministry He's called me into. You know, the, there's a, something so powerful about meditation. This is how God be, began to birth the 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 the, 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 uh, the message in me. You know, this message is in me. It, 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 sometimes I'm amazed just at whatever that I look at. This is this is what comes to mind. This is what comes into my soul to understand you know really when you when you go back to verse 26 it says let them have dominion over all i'm going to skip the fish and the sea yes because we we already have dominion over dogs over cats over over over, over every living thing it says there's something important about say, having dominion over all hallelujah we are created for dominion the reason you are living the reason you were created you were created for dominion that we haven't gotten yet to the part of the purpose the assignment and the call that's another thing altogether we're going to talk about later Hallelujah. So he said, when he said, God, God said, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over all. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And then said, God created man in his image, verse 27. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You're going to understand what I'm talking about, that the creation that is being spoken about here, it is not the physical existence or the physical manifestation of the thing. It's not the physical uh, cre uh, 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 um, creation or formation of the thing. It is all, this is all taking place uh, in the mind of God, in the spirit. You remember, think about when you think about things, that's it, it, it's all spiritual when you think about things. You know, I've, you know, in the beginning, when God was saying, "Let the be, let the be," as He was creating everything else, and He created us, He created us human beings as last, though we're very important. And the first will be the last, and the last will be the first. Don't, don't think that when things are happening last for you, you are, you, 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 you are less of a person. No, God created us last. God created us. He created everything else before, and then He created us. He, but you know, He was making room for us to. Have 
have what to do. Sometimes when things are happening, not in your own time, not in the way you suppose you think it's supposed to happen. Hallelujah. I wasn't even going there, but this is just coming to mind as I'm, as, I, as I'm talking about this. Don't think you are the last, you are not favored by God because that's not completely true. That's not true at all. Do not believe the lie of the enemy. You got, you got to believe that you are precious to God and know and understand and deeply understand that you are precious to your father, the father the creator of heaven and earth. He said he, he created them, God, um, sorry, created men in his own image. Let's go back now to our language, to my language now as I'm, as I, as I was doing the translation. You know, these words, this, this, this uh, statement can mean two things, that we are created in the image of God, so which is uh, in, 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 in his image, the, uh, because it says and likeness, the way he looks, the way he is, everything that he is, this is how we are created. This is why uh, in our mothers and our fathers we see ourselves and they see themselves in us because we are created in their likeness even sometimes we even see it with the character we even see it with the facial features i was looking at my, at my other sister in east london i was like wow she looks so much like my mother I, you know I, I look like my mother too but it's not so much about that looking about uh, you like 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 uh, the person who gave birth to you it's also about it, the character and the personality traits that were in that person, then you begin to know, to understand that, oh my goodness, I'm a really a, a, a photocopy of the person that gave birth to me. Hallelujah. If you don't like the things that were in that person, this is why you need to be born again. Then Jesus will change those things. Hallelujah. So he created, and then he says, he created men in his own image. Like I was saying, you know, go come So which is like uh, in the image of God, in the likeness, like the one that I just explained. Also, the one, the, the, another thing that statement can also mean in the imagination of God. Hallelujah. You know, God, he says in the, in the book of Ephesians chapter three, verse 20, he says uh, he does exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or imagine. Hallelujah. There's something great about imagination. There's something powerful about uh, imagining things. The things that we imagine have a tendency to come to pass because the things that we imagine are first conceived in the mind. Hallelujah. And then they, they so they, yeah, they conceived it in your mind and then they stay there. They, they create an imagination. So when you keep that imagination long long enough it's got a tendency to overtake you and make you you know think big of it or make 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 you do or help you do um create something out of what you have seen what you have thought you've been thinking about the bible talks as well about them. as the man thinks in his heart so is he hallelujah so we see now God yeah, talking about it. He created men and women in his image. Yes, in his image and his likeness, the way he looks, the way he is, his character is everything that he is. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, physically and, and, and every other way. But another way is like in his imagination. Ah, we took, this is talking about, um, it's referring to the spirit spirit that we were created first in the spirit you're gonna see why i'm saying this my understanding of the word it says we were created in his also in his imagination first he first imagined how we were gonna be like consequently that god ended up getting executed in the natural in the physical so the creation is not the same as being created as being formed physically these are two different things because it's, it's clear here that we, 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 were, we didn't exist physically when God created us, it was first planned. He says, let us make man. It was first planned in, 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 in um, verse 26. It was first planned. We are the only creatures that uh, were first planned. We were planned. God's 
spoke it as well when we when he was creating us you know when he was creating all other features uh, uh creatures he said let the be and the was let the be the was and god says saw that it was good but without with us human beings you come you coming to think of the scripture who is man that you are so mindful of he, he said, let us, and then there was a planning that was taking place then. There was a, 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 a planning that was taking place. You know, I used to be a nurse as well. So when I look at, at the whole nursing process, so there was a planning, uh, uh, there was a, a, an assessment, planning, evaluation, and then implementation. You know, you're going to see what I'm going to talk about. It's probably going to be, this is probably going to be a series because it's longer than I thought. And then uh, he says, uh, let them have dominion over fish. Okay, sorry. So now he's talking about this is the imagination of God. He first imagined us in his mind. He, and he, 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 this is a spiritual work that's taking place. So this is all. So basically creation is really referring to the, to, to the, to, it's a work of the soul and the spirit because everything is not, um, appearing yet is not uh, tangible yet so the creation that is talking about here according to my understanding is the, is not yet talking about the physical existence or the physical manifestation of uh, uh, of what he wants he's first planning it and then he conceived it in his mind and then said okay this is how it's gonna be but there's something interesting about uh, about the creation and he finished the creation in his mind in the spirit in the you know in his soul and then he said god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply so the the, the reason for creation of dominion hallelujah that's that's the reason we were created if you see if you read them that's 28 he says before we even existed physically we were blessed we were given a blessing we were endowed with the blessing by the Lord himself, being given everything that we ought to do, uh, how we ought to walk this life. The blessing basically is already there. Hallelujah. Before we even existed. Isn't that amazing? That before we even existed physically, the blessing was already there. Mm, my goodness. It was, you know, some people, they're trying to, to scrouch for the blessing wherever, wherever they go in whatever they do. But really, we are already blessed according to God. We are already being endowed, supernaturally, powerfully endowed by the blessing, with the blessing of God himself. It's not something to, 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 to try to make it work. All you have to do is to just follow the plan of God and the blessing is already on you. Hallelujah, which brings happiness and joy Hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit. So we see here, we see here that uh, the reason we are created is to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and dominion, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over every li living thing that moves on the earth. So before we even came into being physically, which you're going to see shortly, when we're being created, we were not existing physically yet. We were not there yet. We were not physically there yet. I'm going to do a teaching on the, on the four types of birth. I'm going to explain to you what it means. Because we, we, we first existed in the mind of God. We first existed in the mouth of God. And then we've, we also existed in the mind of God, which is in the spirit as well. We also, first, we also now existed in the physical, which is now, this is when through Abraham, sorry, through Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. Now, now that we, we understand, and we also as well, verse 29 talks about, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruits whose fruit yields seed to you, you shall be for food. You know, sometimes like, I know we eat all kinds of things, but really what we're supposed to be fruit eating is what God created seeds fruit vegetables what god created is really what we're supposed to be to, you know to be eating that's not the point that's not the point i'm trying to make here but that you know it, it's good to just throw that for free as well because it will help you to actually look younger than you're supposed to to like to look good in your body to think straight 
you know, you know, the Lord is helping me as well because I've been used to so, to all kind of foods, but really the food that we've been eating is not even proper. It's not what God created. Think about it. So why are we trying to divert from the things that God created to, to try and, and get things that he didn't even create? Eat the things we're putting in the, putting them in our body. And our body is the temple of God. He said, I've given you every, he says, uh, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed. That's fruit and vegetables. That's what he's talking about them. But that's not the point. The point is, in relation to what I'm talking about, that we also have been given everything we need to get to where we are going, to get to do what we're supposed to be doing. Everything. We already have it. If God provided everything that we need to live, we have been given everything. There's a scripture that talks about it. We, we have everything pertaining to life and godliness. We are the children of God. We are created in the image and the likeness of God in his imagination, also in his image physically. Hallelujah. Therefore, we, are, we also... There's no way God created. This is why so when, when, when a baby comes, when a married couple has a baby, they worry so much about what, how they're going to provide for that baby. But it's not even biblically correct for you to worry about the baby when you're married, to, to, to worry about the baby that you are carrying. God is going to provide for that baby. God is going to provide for those babies. There's no doubt about it. It's a death need is guaranteed that God is going to provide for those babies. All you have to do is to just be fruitful and multiply in that area when you are married. Then you will see the blessing of the Lord. You don't have to worry about how you're going to maintain these babies. The, everything has already been provided. Hallelujah. Now, then let's skip over. Now I'm going to go, I kind of covered the creation part of, you know, how we were created and what creation is, that it, it, creation is referring to the spiritual, um, you know, formation of something. It's, it's more of the imagination. It's more of something that's not tangible, but it's tangible because it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna manifest tangibly, physically. You know, you're gonna see now invest in the in um, Genesis chapter 2 then he goes on to say you know by the way when you know when when everything else was planted the trees and in the garden God you know had a way of just letting them be watered by the rivers so so basically everything was just coming naturally from the nature of God so but God realized that you know this needed um, management and maintenance. This is why he created us to manage the things that he has put here on life, to have dominion, to money, to be stewards, good stewards of what everything that he puts on in, in front of us. Hallelujah. Now let me explain. Um, now we're going to go to verse six. Second part of verse 6, chapter 2, verse 6, Genesis still. There was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now we see that... Uh, um, when the creation took place, it was not physical. This scripture is clearly saying that, that there was no physical manifestation of the human being when the creation took place in Genesis 1, 26 to 29. There is no physical manifestation of Adam and Eve. There isn't. Now we see the physical manifestation of what God created and perceived in his mind, had imagined in his mind. He had first spoken, he had first planned it by speaking it, and then he imagined it in his mind. 
Hallelujah. And then now we see what he had imagined. We see now the execution of what he imagined in his mind. We see now this being executed to the full manifestation. What he had, I don't know how long this whole thing takes. It takes about seven days, it says. It took about seven days. How That's how God did the whole creation. But I don't know really how long it, ta- it took for him to, to, um, you know, how long it took for him to execute us as the creation into the physical manifestation. I really don't know how, how long it took. You know, what I know is that, uh, you know, the, one of the scriptures that they put on me is Habakkuk chapter 2. He says to write the vision plain, you know, so that the one who says it may run with it. So really the things that you, 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 God has been speaking to you about, it, it, it will show up at, the, at an appointment, appointed time. So you don't have to, you know, to try and work it out, like as to how it's going to happen. You just continue to be faithful in whatever that you're called to do. This is really where I'm heading. That uh, the manifestation of the physical was first conceived in the spirit and then it manifested in the natural later on. So write your vision plain and make it clear. At the due time, at the right time, it will not tarry, it will, when it says it will not tarry, it will not delay. Yes, it may delay, but then it will happen in God's timing. Let me read that scripture. In Habakkuk. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. Write the vision plain. Okay. Anyway, let me, let me know. I don't want to lose um, a train of thought here. And then, now we see verse 7. And God said, God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now we see now the formation part of what I'm talking about. The physical formation of a man. So this is why I said creation and formation are two different words. So uh, 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 in my language, um, creation is talking about the initial part. The beginning, the pioneering part of it. And then the the the. The formation is putting together. Ukuumba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for causing the language. Wasipumba. <laughs> Wasipumba. Hallelujah. Then he formed us, and God, Lord, formed men of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. You still not fully in existence. Hallelujah. Until. God breathes into you. This is why demons have no right to operate here on earth without the body. This is why they try to use you. So you must say no to the demons, no to the devil. Because really, all the work of darkness is about using your body to do evil. Because there's, they have no right. Because they have not been breathed, breathed into by the Spirit of God. So they have no right to operate here on earth. This is why they use people's bodies in order to operate here on earth. This is why when, when the deliverance takes place, you hear people saying all kinds of things. It's not them that are saying those things or are doing those evil things, but it's what uh, it, it's the, the evil, that the, the, the demons or the devils that are on the inside of them because they cannot operate without the body. And the body, now, they, and now they're using the very same thing God gave us for his benefits. Now they end up, this is why you must not yield to the devil. This is why you must not yield to, if it's contrary to the word of God, it's most likely that it's from the devil. Hallelujah. And then we see here, um, he formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. So we see two, two different things here now that, uh, um, The formation took place. This is now the physical part. And the physical part is still not even properly right. (laughs) Because it's like a dead body. Until God himself breathes into that body that's been formed from the dust. Until God breathes into you then you'll not be able to, to operate. Yes, we'll not be able, able to operate exactly. Really, the, the, the life comes from God. God is the giver of life. If you want to believe anything else, that's your problem. But then the universe itself 
uh, declares God's majesty. So there's no dispute. Even if you want to dispute it or say science, this and that, evolution, this and that, that's all nonsense. That's all rubbish, complete rubbish, com- 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 complete trash. Don't try to, 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 to understand or make sense of God. This is how he says it. This is what he says. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. Hallelujah. And then that's 15, chapter 2, Genesis. Then God, the, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Now this is talking about the stewardship of, uh, of, 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 you know, why they were created. Or they were created for dominion, right? To have dominion, to, 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 to rule, to reign according to God as God, because they are created in the image of God. They are like God in the likeness of God. Now, they were, they, and then it says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of the Eden to tend and keep it. So really the reason we're here is to keep that, to maintain and preserve and, 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 uh, you know, make to grow that is fruitfulness, that which God created that which God had created for us to steward, to be good stewards of. Hallelujah. So basically I I was bringing you to an understanding that who you are, how you were created that as well for you to execute that which God has put on the inside of you because it was already there before you were even born. You, you, all you have to do is to just discover it. When you discover it, this is when you're going to be able to put it on paper and execute. Because as long as we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, we are not living according to God. We are, we are living our life. We're living like heathens. So you are, you are born of God. So trying to live like something you are not, is not going to help you. Trying to live like somebody you were not created to be, it doesn't help. This is why it's so important for you to, to, to pray for the discovery of your purpose, for the discovery of your assignment, for the discovery of your call. So, and usually, this is all conceived in your spirit, in your mind, through prayer, in your soul, through prayer, and through just serving the Lord. If you have not discovered, don't try to, to seek for the peoples. Seek God, then he will show you what you are created to do. He will show you, he will help you discover your call and peoples. So this is all about the, the reason I, 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 I helped you to understand, because you are created in the image of God. So the way God did things is the way you're supposed to do things. So in relation to you discovering your assignment, your purpose, your call is for you to go back to God and do that which he said you must do. First, conceive it in your mind, conceive it in your soul, will soul and emotion, will, will mind and emotions. That is uh, the spiritual work. When you've conceived it long enough, Oh, it doesn't have to be long. When you've conceived it, conceived it and, and, and it's tangible in your soul, it's tangible in your mind, you can feel it in your spirit that, you know, I can do something about this. Then this is where the execution comes from. Then you execute that which you have conceived, which you have put down according to how you have put it as a vision, according to Habakkuk chapter two. This is how God created us. He created, us in, he created us in his image. And then that first was conceived in the mind, in, in, in the mind of God, in his spirit. Hallelujah. Then it was executed in the natural, in the physical. That is the formation. So you can execute that very same thing God has been putting in your mind, in your soul, uh, and, 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 and actually make it happen. Let me tell you something. If you don't do what God has told you to do, you are delaying yourself. Not only you are delaying yourself, you, um, you, um, God is going to use somebody else. 
And when you see, you know, I've had it a number of times, actually about two, three times, that uh, God would give me something to say. And I probably maybe would delay because of trying to, to make it perfect or whatever. I realize that all this perfection is, is not going to work. Because I'm not a perfect human being. So, and I would hear somebody else preaching that very same message. And I'll be like, oh, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, forgive me. But that just comes to tell you that there is always a replacement for you. The last thing you want to do is to be replaced by God. Replaced, you know, you know, by someone else. Oh, you know, replaced for someone else by God because you didn't obey what God wants you to do. I'm going to pray with you and for you today so that uh, we'll begin to... Uh, to begin walk in that which you are called to to walk in, to do what which you are called, you know, to do your assignment, your purpose, your call. Remember, you created for dominion. How can you have, uh, how can you have dominion without even knowing what you are called to do? Because really, uh, dominion will will come from passion. When you know what you are supposed to do, which is your purpose, it will create passion in you when you're passionate enough about what you are called to do hallelujah which is most likely to happen highly likely to happen then you will be so big up to a point of creating dominion hallelujah i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about the kingdom part of it now let's just talk about the, the first part of the dominion so father in the mighty name of jesus christ who died on the cross and rose up again is coming back i pray god almighty that lord you will help us as, as your children oh god to um really walk in that which you've called us to walk in and help us to understand oh god that lord you indeed created us in your image and your likeness oh god therefore we ought to do exactly the same thing oh god that you did except for except for uh, having authority over you we have authority over everything else except authority over you doing what we want to do at the time we want to do it we pray, God Almighty, that, Lord, you will help us, O oh Father, that, Lord, we will execute that which uh, you have put in our hearts, you have put in our minds, you have put in our souls, that, Lord, so that we, people will learn from that which you've put on the inside of us. Because you speaking to us, O oh God, you want your people to know who you are. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come against that which is distracting your people from doing that which they're supposed to be doing. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that today is a new day, O oh God. And it is the day that you have made. We are glad and rejoicing in you, Father. And I pray that, O oh Lord, we'll understand that your oh, creation and formation are two different things, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to first do the creation part of it and conceive and, and do uh, that which you have said in our soul and in our spirit, O oh God. And execute after it's conceived, uh, you know, well enough in our spirit, O oh God, we will be able to execute it in the natural. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us, O oh God, do this journey very well, all for the glory of your name i pray in jesus christ mighty name and help us to know as well that lord we have been given everything pertaining to life and godliness we have everything that we need oh god to do that which you've called us to do i pray in the name of jesus christ hallelujah when well, i give you an opportunity today to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. For the things that I talk about here, the things that even other ministers talk about, they cannot be fully understood by the, a, a natural mind, a, a, the, the person who, who, who understands the things that ministers talk about are the things of the Spirit. And in order for you, hallelujah, to understand the things of the Spirit, you must be born again. Hallelujah. Being born again is being born of water and born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You're the same way the wind blows from the left to the right by are you accepting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and as your Savior that is what we call born again born of the Spirit for the Bible also says hallelujah no one will inherit the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again no one will inherit will enter the kingdom of heaven hallelujah the inheritance is talking about the perceiving of the things of God he says you must be born again to perceive and understand and fully understand the things of the Spirit 
prosperity. And then it goes on to say in John chapter 3, verse 5, no one will inherit the, will enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are born of the spirit. This is why you must be born of the spirit in order for you to understand the things of the spirit. What is of the flesh is of the, of the flesh. What you understand by the flesh is of the flesh. Now it's time for you to take it a notch higher and go to the spirit so that you will understand the things of the spirit. Remembering that life is spiritual. As long as you're trying to live this life uh, only in the natural, you will not make it. I promise you. <laughs> you will not. <laughs> you will not. Today I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's how you get born again. It is through the confession of the mouth and the believing in your heart. The Bible says you shall be saved. You will be born again. When you believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the gospel is that Jesus died. He rose up again. He's coming back again. And you believing that he is the son of the living God, that after he had died, he rose up again on the third day. God himself, the father, he raised him up. Believing this truth will help Help you to be righteous according to God, not in your own righteousness. This is how you are made righteous by believing what God says. Hallelujah. Believing what God says, believing that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He says you will be you will be made righteous. Therefore, after believing, there's something about believing that 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 uh, takes you over. When that has taken you over, hallelujah, it's most likely to come out, come out of your mouth for the the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 34, hallelujah, out of the abundance of the heart, hallelujah, the mouth will speak, hallelujah, that which you believe, now you will begin to speak it out, and there's power in speaking, that which you believe, even if that you don't believe, there's power in speaking for life and death is in the power of the tongue. Power is not life in, is not in life and death is in the power of your tongue. You speaking it, it brings life or it brings death. And now I want you to receive life, life eternal. For Jesus said, he came to give you life and life abundantly. Hallelujah. He came to give you life. He didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to give you life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. He says he doesn't, he doesn't wish anyone to perish, but everyone to have eternal life. If you're going around and saying gospel is a waste of time, remember the Bible says, you prosper as your soul prospers. There must be a prosperity of the soul first before there's prosperity of anything else in any other way in the name of Jesus. So now I'm going to lead you into, to that prayer. The repeating is the confession. It's not just the repeating the words I'm speaking. It's the confession that helps you fulfill the scripture. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says you shall be born and you shall be saved. It is unto confession you are saved. It is unto believing you are made righteous. That's what the word of the living God says in the, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 10. I'm going to ask that you repeat the prayer after me with your lips out loud and your heart open. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God, my father. I believe you died. You rose up again and you're coming back. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe you are sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe you are alive forevermore. I believe you are coming back again for me. Hallelujah. Believing this truth, I declare I am saved. I declare I am born again. I declare I will definitely go to where you are in heaven. I will understand the things of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Now, Jesus, fill me with your Spirit. Hallelujah. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be a witness. For you said in your word, after that the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were filled with power to be witnesses. Wherever you are, you can be a witness. That which you receive today is the most expensive gift. Nobody else can give you but Jesus. No one else can give you but God. Hallelujah. You've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Father, touch them with your spirit, by your spirit. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give you glory, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves you. I love you too. 
and I'll see you tomorrow. Hallelujah.